please rise for the worshipful mayor and the deputy mayor. Good evening, members. Please be seated. Okay, members, thank you very, very much. Very nice to see you all here this evening. Can I officially remind you that the whole process will be filmed um, and will be displayed on the uh, Welcome Borough Council um, webpage? And can I also um, just ask for your understanding as we have two young children in the chamber with us tonight. Um, who actually will present a petition um, and I hope you will give them the support that they deserve for doing it. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any apologies for this evening? Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Could I borrow the uh, Deputy Chief Executive for a minute, please? Can you borrow the Deputy Chief Yes, please. It is quite important. Um, I think, Mr. Mayor, we have apologies from Councillor Alice Alti, Councillor Chris Bowery, Councillor Wayne Smith. Any other apologies? very much, Graham. I think, believe you are needed by a greater power over there. But please, do, but please come back. <laughs> One of you, anyway. <coughs> um, can I also, while, um, while I have the microphone, um, just um, pass on, on behalf of the council, and certainly on behalf of my wife and myself, my condolences to uh, <coughs> Councillor Barry Patton for the loss of his uh, wife whilst on holiday recently in Portugal. Um, Barry, we were, we were absolutely shocked to hear that uh, dreadful news, and you have our thoughts. May God go with you. <coughs> Minutes of the previous meeting, members, and um, displayed in pages 15 to 26 <coughs> on your agenda. Take those um, in that for seven minutes. Would you support those, please? Please show. Looks to be. Is there any, any against? Those carried. Seven minutes accepted. Two declarations of interest will be difficult because the, the uh, deputy CEO has vanished. So I might just uh, have to come back to that. I can do it? I can do it. Okay, I can do it. So are there any declarations of interest from any members from any item on the agenda this evening? Please share. Now members, uh, I have decided to bring the uh, petitions forward um, on the agenda to do, cover that next um, as we have uh, to um, of people who want to deliver a petition to us. Um, now, um, <coughs> we have two mums, Catherine and Heidi, and uh, two uh, young ladies and their daughters who come to offer a petition. Um, 
competition. <coughs> and um, can I ask, um, Karen, you're about to take the lead, could you introduce the um, petition? You have three minutes. Good evening, everybody. My name is Karen Davison, and this is Lily Hughes, and this is my daughter, Maisie Davison. And before Christmas, Maisie um, wrote a letter to the mayor um, asking him if he would build a path to school to allow um, her and her friends and staff to be able to get to school. We, um, the girls go to Graysley, um, wrote your primary, and um, Maisie yeah, wrote a letter and very kindly enclosed a cheque for £10 to go towards the um, building of the path, which the mayor still has, or it's in the, in the building. And um, yeah, she then came, was invited to come for lunch, and she brought Lily with her, and we had a lovely day. You treated our VIPs, weren't you? And, um, and then, yeah, you brought your petition. You got lots of signatures. And um, the mayor invites us back this evening to put Maisie's case forward. So I will pass you over to Maisie and Lily. I would like to present Mr. Mayor this petition on behalf of me, Lily Hughes, and 293 petitions for the construction of a path from Mayor Road Park and Ride to Grazy School. Both me and Lily would like to say a few words. Thank you for allowing us to bring this petition to you today. We would like a path to school because it will reduce car pollution and reduce traffic jams. We would also like a path to school because it will keep children and parents fit. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, yes, the petition. Sorry. Are you done? We have a petition to um, hand over to you. Okay, please do. And we'll leave, we'll leave that with you. Sorry, that's all right. Now, members, just, just uh, while we take the petition, <clears throat> let me just tell you a little bit of history here. Um, Maisie uh, wrote to the mayor, sent me a cheque, asked me to get a path towards a path outside their school um, in, uh, in Gravesley School. And I was so touched by this letter and her enthusiasm. We invited them in for the day. And we had lunch together. And uh, during this lunch, they opened their little satchels and said, we got a petition here, what are you doing with this? So I said, come to council present it. And I never thought they would, but they had an answer. So very well done, girls. Thank you so much. And we have two, obviously, budding councillors. <laughs> <laughs> we have a second petition now, I believe. Can you say? Yes. <laughs> we know our we know our place for yes. <laughs> Look on the website, you see two stars. Cheers. We. You'll be pleased to know that on my final council meeting, I'm not going to break with habit and make a long speech. We're just presenting this petition on behalf of the campaign for protection of rural Wokingham. And uh, we, as the ward members for the mainly affected area, so we're doing it jointly because it's apolitical. Okay, thank you very much. We, we have 2,036 signatures, uh, and I think it's 1839 that were on the uh, website in total. Thank you, uh, members. Thank you very much. And members, we're going to move now to public question time. Um, as a reminder, supplementary questions must relate to the original question or the response that is given to that question. Due to the number of questions, we have a hand. Diane? Uh, I don't think we've got a minute. 
said a few moments ago. I note that on many occasions you have started this part of council meetings with a speech about supplementary questions needing to be about the reply given by the executive member. Yeah. I refer you to the council constitution <coughs> paragraph 4.2.10.7 entitled supplementary questions. For the benefit of the chamber I will quote the second sentence. The supplementary question must arise directly out of the original question or the reply. The Council, Council Constitution is clear that members and residents may follow up their original question rather than be forced to follow the executive member down some rabbit hole. I ask the Mayor and subsequent Mayors to cease from misdirecting this chamber. I ask the Chief Executive and Democratic Services to ensure that this does not happen again. Thank you. Well, I'm really not sure what you say has happened before, Ian. Um, uh, oh, yes. Any time. Um, okay, you, you made your point. I'm still going to insist that supplementaries relate to the answers or the original question. Thank you very much. I don't want to waste, don't waste any more time. You're <laughs> 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 just wasting time. You're just wasting time. And there's a lot of members of the public who have come here tonight to pose a question. And I think it's incumbent upon us to give them their time to do so. Not bury them under procedural. Thank you. So do we have Helen Powell in the house? We do. Helen, would you like to ask a question? And, and by the way, members, just before you, you do, Helen, if, if uh, members of the public would ask questions standing in their name rather than reading it all out, it would help. It would help control the time. We're up against time and see. So Helen, over to you. Thank you, good evening. Uh, my question is, with Wokingham Town Centre suffering complete chaos from the regeneration shambles, why not wait until the peach place and town centre work are complete and all the retail units in that area are successfully let before continuing to destroy our field? So, I guess it's just to remind our audience. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, well, th th firstly, thank you for your question. <coughs> I think there's no doubt that a significant change has happened in working um, the council's embarked on ambitions. An ambitious regeneration program, delivering the town centre master plan, ambition from the facilities that our residents and businesses deserve. We recognise that it's not been an easy time for town, but can now see the Fourth Street technical meeting tomorrow, these projects are to live in high quality spaces for working. Projects of this scale are complex, and it's not possible to deliver work like this without some disruption. But I do challenge the accusation that it's chaos. Officers and members of this council, in partnership with both the town council and our contractors, are working hard together to ensure that this is well planned and coordinated. These discussions have also shown that there are significant benefits to running these projects concurrently rather than separately. Traffic and impacts can be carefully managed together and it reduces the overall time taken to complete work by several years. An example of this will be when we are able to phase the work at Ells Field to benefit from the significant reduction of traffic using the lower part of Denmark Street so we're not doing it again and again. Far better than waiting for the future one to start and then to start another. So rather than discouraging companies from coming to work here, 
his work has shown commitment to the campaign. It's been a fantastic town centre and is echoed by the strong interest from businesses, both national and independent, in taking units across the town centre. And the briefing that I have today shows that that is increasing at a rate. So, in conclusion, I think regeneration of this scale is ambitious, but I think being ambitious is something a great local council should be. Thank you very much. <coughs> do you have a supplementary relationship to that, John? Do you like to ask? I do, yeah. I also would say I think your residents might agree and say there is chaos. However, um, my supplementary question is <coughs> are the projects financially viable on their own or is the destruction of Elmsfield being used to make a complete programme of regeneration financially viable? No, no, certainly the, all, all of the, uh, the parts uh, are financial. There's no cross no, subsidisation from one to another. Thank you very much. Um, Peter Humphreys. Um, by my background, I first raised this question via email with the regeneration centre back on the 8th of February this year. We passed it to the so called Highways Improvements team. When they failed to respond, they also contacted the executive member for highways and transport and also the leader of the council, so they were involved to respond to the questions. Um, as well, no one can actually answer the name of, of who a single person is in the uh, apparently faceless highways improvement team, so I could chase up in person. A visit to shoot air proves to be equally fruitless, as not a single employee could be found who is working in a marketplace project, but it was a Friday. Anyway, in early February, I observed the hole caused by roadworks at the entrance of the Peach Plaza in Rosary had been filled in, yet part of the highway was still fenced off, and the temporary traffic lights in one-way working still in use. The hauntings had moved since then, but at that point in time, the road could have been reopened to two-way traffic, but it wasn't. By way of an update, the hauntings at the Royal Street Junction had been moved forward. If the project had been done properly managed, the roadworks at this point would have been done and freed up the junction, uh, should have been done first and freed up the junction. Clearly, if the works in the square have been logically sequenced, the temporary lights in Rose Street could have been removed weeks ago, and if the alternative westbound route opened through the town centre, congestion would have been relieved on Denmark Street, mm -hmm. Big Champs, and Wellington <coughs> Roads. Why was this not done? Okay, I guess we've been talking about Peter. Uh, good evening, Peter. It's good to be chatting to you again. Um, I've looked into the history of your original question from the 8th of February. As you passed it on to me on the 22nd of February, that was my first exposure to this question. That question was, as you have frequently pointed out, a very simple one, which was, please explain exactly why my lane of Rose Street is still shut, when I looked earlier in the week, there was a small hole with no activity in it. Is this hole necessary? Can it be filled in and two-way traffic reinstated? That was your question. This was responded to you on the 14th of February with a clear answer, which was for the hole. There is a small hole adjacent to the Peach Place site entrance, which related to some Scottish and Southern District SSE works on Rose Street. They have devised fullness our Peach Place contractors, that this work should be completed shortly, at which point Dornas will be able to put the hoardings back in place at the edge of our site and reinstate the footpath alongside our site, albeit with restricted width adjacent to the scaffolding. And for the question on the single lane working, you were told, I believe they are required due to the width restriction at the corner of Broad Street, Rose Street. The road reduces to a single lane at this point, and as it is a blind corner, cannot be managed safely with a priority traffic approach we have been able to use for the Peach Place works. That was sent to you on the 14th of February. So I'm not sure why you're certain you have not had an answer, but I'm happy to put it into the public domain for anyone to read. You've been a bit economical with the truth there. Do you have a supplement? Yes, I do. Sorry. I know you should say it first, but... Well, you, no, I should ask you if you do. Yes, you do. Okay. I'll save you time. You've been a bit economic with the truth on that one because the reply came from the regeneration team who said I needed to speak to the highways and food and they were just making assumptions and I never got a reply from them or yourself or from Charlotte. So that's the first point. The road could have been opened up because as you know, over Christmas, well, the road is equally narrow. I'm coming to the question. <laughs> well, I want to find out why the road 
traffic lights were not removed. Oh, okay. Over Christmas, the lights were removed. It's purely a political statement to say we could be doing something for you over Christmas. The road was no wider then than it is now. Um, it could have been opened. Subsequent road works could have been done in the corner and it could have been opened six, eight weeks ago and it would have relieved all the congestion. So why was it so badly planned? And are you going to get it right the next time? As I said, you had an answer. The answer actually actually said about the highways improvement team that if you wanted more information, they were provided. They and there was no further communication from you whatsoever. There have been several emails. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Humphrey, for that question and a supplementary. Um, Councillor Hayes, thank you. Councillor Hayes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to ask a question on budget consultation standing in my name. Thank you. Oh, no. Long answer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, Mr. Melvin, for your question. Um, as it was made clear in all the publicity material this year, the budget consultation was primarily the first year of a two year process in order to help in inform the difficult decisions the authority could be facing uh, over the next year. A summary of the findings was provided to members of the executive ahead of this year's budget to ensure that the priorities of our residents were checked against those in our proposed budget. One of the key findings is that the top three priorities supported by residents were one, new housing is built where it is appropriate and comes with good infrastructure and facilities. Number two, we have a thriving economy with a successful range of businesses. And three, roads are well maintained. These findings and others were reflected in the budget of the Council in February. As stated already, the full findings will be informed, will inform both further targeted consultations and the setting of next year's medium-term financial plan. A full report on the findings of this year's consultation will be published soon, and all of those who took part and uh, those who provided email addresses will be notified, and uh, I know that you will be one of those because you you for the consultation. So thank you very much. I do, but sadly it's a bit longer than you probably welcome. Um, as, long as, a, as long as it's a question. There is a question at the end. Can I ask the leader to ensure? Well, just uh, I, I must admit, I'm disappointed, of course, that nothing has been produced for me, a member of the public, uh, and anybody else. Uh, I, I have no understanding of why that problem has occurred. As you know, there are almost 700 people making comments. I imagine I'm not the only one who is looking keenly. <coughs> but you have at least answered part of the question by saying that at least some members of the council have received these uh, comments. Uh, it's a pity that nobody thought to send them to the members of the public as well. Um, you've also <coughs> made, made the comment I was going to make, that this is part of a, a, a two-pronged approach. The first and one. The question and now, the uh, and now next year, uh, you'll be moving to the difficult decision. Um, we, you've identified priorities. Now you have... Your question, you've got, Keith. Um, Please. I, I'm getting that. I only have this section that needs to be... Well, that, on my four sheet, no, just and a question, please. The leader of the council has rightly referred to priorities. Um, we have a range of priorities already. I know that. They're in every agenda. But do you have a question, Mr. And I'd like I'm specifically... Off. No, no, I, I have a question. I specifically Please. like Please. to refer to the second one. <laughs> and that second one is investing in regeneration, regenerating towns. I won't go for the rest of it. So what I want to understand is why but I'll, I'll, I'll drop straight to the question then and say, okay, that, that priority has not appeared in the consultation. You've heard from two members of the public, and you could hear from me as well, about the, uh, the regeneration, millions of pounds spent, millions of journeys delayed, millions of um, revenue not being received by local businesses. So can I ask the leader to ensure that the public, public budget consultation for this year it's done earlier, stating it's even obvious, because obviously you're going to want to do that, um, includes reference to the regeneration, which is a clear uh, priority, um, just by the questions you're getting already. And um, obviously to be reported earlier, um, to allow, if necessary, uh, a referendum on a higher council tax increase, um, as the council has the opportunity, will be taking back control uh, of its money from government at the end of next year. So, <laughs> Keith, your question will now be put to Charlotte. End of.
Thank you, Mr. Arvin, for your um, long protracted <laughs> second question. Um, I have assured you that the results of the uh, initial budget consultation will be published, and they will be. I promise it nothing until it's delivered. Quiet! I have assured you that they will be published, and they will be published. In terms of regenerating the town, I will refer you to the agenda tonight and the council plan review, which is in here. It goes through everything that we had promised and what we have delivered. And I think it's a really comprehensive plan, and I urge you to read it if you haven't already got a copy. In terms of the next uh, few number of years, we are going out for consultation for the next council plan, and it's a really good opportunity for all our residents, partners, voluntary sector, uh, partners in health, uh, police, everybody to get involved in shaping what should the priorities be for the future coming years. And I know that you'll want to get involved, and I urge you to get involved in that. And in, in that regard, you can shape what we do in the future years. Thank you very much, uh, Thank you, um, <laughs> Jack Jacqueline Wilson, is she here? Yes. She's here, Jacqueline. Can someone please explain to me why the decision to start work on Elms Field, a very unpopular project to most residents, I have to say, was taken when our lovely old town is already in total chaos? <coughs> Good evening, Jackie. Uh, thank you very much for your question. As mentioned in my colleague Sir Monroe's earlier response, Wokingham Town Centre is undergoing significant change as the council proceeds with delivering the facilities that our residents and businesses deserve. The regeneration projects at Peach Place, Elmsfield, and Carnival, along with the highways projects at the marketplace, are all important parts of creating a future for Wokingham that will allow it to thrive. And yes, we recognise that this has not been an easy time for the town centre, but as can now be seen in the Broad Street section reopening tomorrow, these projects are delivering high quality spaces for working. Projects of this scale are complex, and it's not possible to deliver work like this without some disruption. But the implications of works having been continually assessed before the decisions are being made to move forward with many of the different phases. Officers and members of this council, in partnership with Wokingham Town Council and our contractors, are working hard together to ensure delivery is well planned and coordinated. These discussions have also shown there are significant benefits to running these projects concurrently rather than consecutively. Traffic and impacts can be carefully managed together, and it reduces the overall time to complete the works by several years. As an example, we have <coughs> phased the works at Elms Field to benefit from the significant reduction in traffic within the lower part of Denmark Street, and whilst completing the other section is closed for the marketplace works. Far better to wait for completion than to start one after that. Overall, we believe that delivering these projects together is the best move for the town and its residents, and will ensure that the facility working needs will be in place ready to cope with the rapidly growing population, rather than waiting until existing infrastructure is the problem. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Colonel. Uh, oh, sorry, I get lots of problems with it. Thank you very much. Do you have a supplement? No, I think that's right. Thank you very much. Well done. And uh, David here, I see David here. Thank you. You're asking in at his behalf, <coughs> so there will be no supplement. Then. So would you like to ask a question? Uh, good evening. Uh, it's a question from David here. <coughs> Residents have complained recently about localised speeding. Would it be possible to have a VAS vehicle activated sign in Cutbush Lane, Chapters Way, Medrus Way, and Carl Shelton? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. We have two types of vehicle activated signs, namely permanent and mobile ones, which record the speed of vehicles. The permanent ones are placed at locations where injuries have been occurring due to the speed of vehicles. The mobile ones are placed at locations where residents have concerns that injuries might not have occurred. They are in situ for a week at a time and then moved to a new location. Clearly the criteria for which one to implement is less onerous on the mobile vans. The traffic management team have checked the personal accident history at the above locations. Unfortunately, there have been no injury accidents on the above roads in the three years preceding 30th of November 2017 relating to speeding. There have been three incidents at the roundabout, which were all 
failing, failure to give way or failure to look properly. So permanent vase would be inappropriate. However, if you'd like to pursue the mobile VAS option, then you can either contact your local councillor to help you to do that, or you can contact the traffic management team directly at traffic.management I'm going slowly because he's writing it down dot atworking.gov.uk to discuss suitable locations. Any severe or persistent speeding problems identified through this will then be passed through to the Thames Valley Police to consider for enforcement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. And we move on to Guitar Hair Mayhem. Yes. Thank you again. Well, yes, you again. Yes. Hello. Uh, yeah, many residents in Maiden Early have signed my petition to try to save the Maiden Early Public Library. <coughs> what has the council done to try to save the library? And who's going to take this? Oh, no. Okay, thank you very much. The decision to end the council's use of the Maiden Early School Library was taken by the Maiden Early School in accordance with the lease arrangements that have been in place for 34 years. How the council continues to meet its statutory obligations to provide a comprehensive and efficient library service for the residents of Walking Borough is currently being assessed and recommendations will be submitted for consideration once this is completed. Thank you very much. Do we have a supplementary? You do? Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for stating that the council is at least committed to and looking at options. Can I, can I please ask uh, when I can get the date of these options to, uh, so that they're firmed up? for the residents of uh, Maiden Early, so that they know that the library is safe. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The, um, our intention is to bring a paper to a June executive meeting, um, outlining how, this will, how the closure will affect the library service and how we'll continue to provide the library service. So but anyone that has suggestions in the meantime, then please send them through to me or the officers, and we'll, we'll have a good look at them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Sue Smith, do we have Sue Smith here? Not here? Right. Well, that will be a written answer then. Um, David Dean. Do you have David Dean here? Good evening. There is considerable evidence that there is overprovision of restaurants and eating houses throughout the UK. With the imminent closure of Pretzo in Wokingham and also Woodley, and the future of the Café Rouge chain in doubt, how confident are WBC that new eating establishments will open in Wokingham Town Centre, notably Peach Place, and Thrive? Never been about simply offering to the highest bidder, 
and we continue to tie with companies both chains and independent that we believe are right for working. And we are confident that these operators will cont contribute to delivering our vision for working. From the comments we regularly receive from residents and local groups like working and costly girls, naming the types of business they would like to see in town, we believe people will be pleased when we start to announce our tenants later this year. Good evening. I'd like to ask a question standing in my name. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, whilst trees are being removed from the site at Elms Field, about 100 new semi mature trees are being planted as part of the redevelopment. These trees have been selected to improve the biodiversity and sustainability on the site and will also help mitigate pollution. Other sustainability investment in the development includes designing buildings to achieve green, very good status for commercial properties, inclusion of water fountains to refill water bottles, and working with the town council to install split recycling bins within the park. The Elmsfield development also includes a new through road from Wellington Road to Shoot End, which will help address congestion and offer alternative routes within the town, working as part of a large number of highways improvements across the borough to improve journeys. Capturing more car parking on the edges of the town, as well as improving the town centre offer to reduce the need for residents to commute elsewhere, should also help reduce <coughs> congestion. Having a great town centre on the doorstep means people will be able to walk to the town or cycle and take advantage of the increased cycle parking across the centre. Thank you. Can we have something? Yes, please. We do. Thank you. Um, living in Lower Early, walking into the town centre is not really an option. Going forwards, what plans do you have generally to cut traffic pollution throughout the borough due to the increased traffic due to the increased housing? There are a number of um, highways improvements, um, bypasses that uh, will help the flow of traffic. We're also investing a substantial amount in cycleways. As you know from Lower Alley, there's a good cycleway in Lower Alley. Cycleways coming down into Walkingham Town Centre. We have also recently just opened a greenway so that people can walk or cycle between Finchamstead and the new development at Aberfield Green. This phase two of that greenway is underway in that area. Um, some of those uh, developments will also allow people for horse riding, so there'll be a, uh, uh, a leisure element as well as people getting <coughs> places. So the Greenway will allow people to go to the Bohan School, for example. So we're investing in the always mix of uh, ways of getting people around. Thankfully, a lot of people use trains. Um, as you've seen, Walkingham Station, the car park's been increased, more people are using trains. Again, in Lower Alley, Winners, Winners uh, Triangle, with the car park there is well used. So again, offering an alternative to people taking cars places. There are park and rides as well being installed. There's more park and rides planned. So a whole mix of things to try and get people not to have to drive everywhere that they want to go. Thank you very much. Yes, I am. Good evening. I'd like to ask ask the question standing in my name. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The council has secured through the planning process significant areas of new public open spaces in recent years. Not only do we have some of the highest standards for the provision of public open space in the local area, but we've also benefited from the need for sustainable, for suitable alternative natural green space and science in our area. So far, we have consented 48 hectares, which is equivalent to about 63 football pitches in size, of science at six sites in the North and South Wokium SDLs, as well as providing 18 hectares at Rook's Nest Wood in Barkham. Five of these sites are already open to the public and the remaining two should be opening in 2018-19. <coughs> Across the borough we have consented to date 
183 hectares of sites in total, which is roughly the same size as Dinton Pastures, just to give you a larger scale. In addition, the council has purchased 26 hectares of land at Gray's Fruit Farm in order to develop a new sport hub to provide high quality sports facilities that will complement Wokingham Town's existing sports hub at Cantley Park. With regards to Alice Field and Wokingham Town Centre, despite rumours, this was never donated to the council but was purchased from the owners for a substantial amount of money in 1956. The council is currently in the process of regenerating Alice Field and as part of the work is investing significantly in improving the park. This work includes completely landscaping the space with improved year-round planting, large areas of grass space and plentiful seating. The new park will also have a larger play area <coughs> and the services needed to run community events such as water, fire drainage and electricity. The new park will be managed by Wokingham Town Council on behalf of the residents <coughs> of the town and we believe this space will become a fantastic legacy for generations of Wokingham residents. Thank you. Thank you very much. No supplementary, thank you. No, sorry. Thank you very much. Um, I believe the next question is from Rachel Bishop. Well, it's not here tonight. But um, I don't know if there will be no supplement. That's fine, thank you. Um, Rachel's question is, some of the council-owned garages on Ormond Road are in very poor condition. Repairs have now started, and thank you for this. However, a number of them are still damp and dilapidated daily. <coughs> Renting a garage is currently £48 a month. Will the council be offering a rebate to those who are renting a garage which is not being maintained? Uh, thank you for your question. <coughs> As you rightly uh, pointed out, the council has undertaken a programme of repairs to its <coughs> garage stock. To this end, we've allocated a further £150,000 in the next financial year. Our ability to undertake these works also requires the continuing collection of garage rents. Any reduction in the rents would have an adverse effect on our ability to continue with these programmes. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Thank you. Uh, this is a question to the executive member for strategic highways and planning. Uh, you have been responsible for or heavily involved in the planning of the many thousands of houses that work in this currently in the petition of having built in our area. You are now leading the late, latest local plan where even more houses can be coming, but the infrastructure to support these numbers of houses has not been delivered. When are we going to see plans to ensure our borough has the infrastructure it needs to support its current and new residents? Thank you. Yeah, that's me. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, well, first of all, I wasn't responsible for the actual numbers. I was involved with the where they should go. Right. It's the called planning. planning. <laughs> Sorry? It's called planning. I didn't say you were responsible for the numbers. The plan you were asking to see already exists and has been in the public domain and has been frequently publicised since 2010. It is the core strategy, also known as the local plan. This plan set out how we would accommodate the homes requiring of us to build some 13,000 in the years 2006 to 2026 by carefully planning, <coughs> providing and securing the money from developers for hundreds of millions of pounds of new and improved infrastructure and facilities. Some examples of what have been done, such as we've got the Bowhunt Wolfgang Secondary School at Argofield Green, which is open on September 16, Montague Park Primary School at Montague Park in Wolfgangham, also opened in 2016, and again, this was very early in the Montague Park development phase. Park funded the new Wokingham Medical Centre in Wokingham. We helped secure early funding for the Shinfield Eastern Relief Road. This was actually built by a contractor on behalf of the University of Reading and had some well-publicised construction delays. But the early funding has meant that despite the problems, it was open before many of the new homes in the area were occupied. <coughs> the Otterfield Cross Relief Road which will take traffic away from Harbour Field Cross Village, now has full planning permission. 
Sections of the North and South Fork distributor roads have been built, and we have recently signed a contract with Balfour BT to build our other sections of these, as well as other major highway projects. We have given planning consent, as Norman has said earlier, to 183 hectares of suitable alternative natural space, or as I prefer to call them, country parks. <coughs> We have brought, uh, bought Gray's Farm, again as Norman has mentioned, to become a new sports hub. We will be rebuilding Boomer's uh, Sports Centre and the Carnival Pool and building a new swimming pool at Alderfin Green. This massive infrastructure investment can be funded because we have been successful in getting financial contributions from developers, about £30,000 per new home at present, and because we had a plan in place to deliver the improvements. You are correct that we are overseeing a new plan, the local plan update. We have been engaging with residents on this in recent years and will continue to do so to make future housing that we are required to accommodate in well served, well served by new infrastructure. <coughs> unfortunately, I want to add the basis of your question, unfortunately infrastructure takes a while to build. We wish it could be delivered earlier, but the important thing is it will come. One new secondary school, seven new primary schools, a uh, bridge over the M4, uh, six major new roads, two railway bridges, country parks, new sports facilities at Grays Farm, etc. Thank you very much. Do you have something? Yes, thank you. Uh, I just want to talk about housing, as you mentioned that, and the objectively house assessed housing need has been increasing over the past months to now stand at a figure near 900,000 a year. 900. 900 a year, I do apologise. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was 9,000 a year. <laughs> uh, this has been due to at least the significant part of the inability of the Woken Borough Council being able to state that it had a five year land supply. In a number of cases, government planning inspectors have said that the council had used out of date information to support the arguments put forward and had, their, um, yeah, put forward and had therefore upheld a number of appeals. I now understand that the council has carried out a more up-to-date assessment of the number of houses actually being started and completed in the bar. Uh, however, should this information not have been updated many months ago, and it may have been able to uh, give you more information to the inspectors before they started raising these points, it comes across as someone bolting the stable door after the horse has already bolted. Thank you. In terms of that, we carry out each year an annual housing assessment and the last uh, assessment was carried out in January 16 and it's based on figures of household projections which come from the Office of National Statistics. The, those figures give us a figure of 856 we have to build each year. Appeal inspectors increased that to 894. They increased on the basis that if you increase the required housing, the price will drop. The problem was that they weren't even building at that original figure. The original plan, which I referred to early, 2010, was actually very clearly end-led, which meant, because we were building in four large uh, locations, the, appeal, the inspector who reviewed our plan and agreed with it, a plan at which our local MP spoke in support, and myself as leader as I was then, and the, the inspector agreed that we would be delivering more houses towards the end of our plan. That has been shown to be the case. Because we knew that was happening, I informed the officers that I wanted an urgent review of the housing numbers carried out. And we did that in November. It's normally done in April this year. We did it in November and we published that. And the basis of that showed that we did not have a 4.9% year figure. We had a 678 year. We've had further good news because we've had a further update to the GL report. And that report has given us um, when we